Hey everybody, thanks for checking out my video. I am your friendly neighborhood Uncle Pete, and this is my series, Nails in a Coffin, where we learn that with great kills, they must also come. Great nails. Welcome back to my channel, or welcome to my channel. If you are new here, you can read what Nails in a Coffin is all about in the section down below, because these videos really aren't film reviews. Rather, I break down the victims' deaths, and I talk about how stupid they were, what decisions they made, how well they responded to their life-threatening situation. Cool. So... This week, I'm covering a Canadian horror movie released in 1981 called The Pit. If you haven't seen this movie, if you're unfamiliar, it explores into the unsettling world of Jamie, a socially awkward young boy who communicates with this teddy bear aptly named Teddy. Jamie has a secret. He knows of mysterious creatures that he calls trellologs that he found in the forest in a large pit. And as my friend Josh would say, you know, it's, it's in the title. He uses these creatures to exact revenge on his bullies and his enemies. Now his behavior becomes increasingly more erratic during the concern of his living babysitter, Sandy. Now the whole entire audience is taken on a chilling journey toward the twisted climax at the end of this movie. Pretty great film. So that should cover everything. I hope you guys enjoy. Sit back, relax, and let's let the nail and begin. We get our first kill just three minutes into the film. The film starts during Halloween. Jamie is dressed as a ghost and he approaches Freddy, a bully that had previously punched him in the face unprovoked. Jamie tells him he wants to talk to him in private and that he has something for him and they walk to a secluded wooded area. Once there, Freddy tells Jamie, hey, this better be no trick. It's no trick. It's in the bag right there, Jamie tells Freddy. Freddy gets to the bag and it's at the end of this giant pit. Jamie shows up behind him and shoves Freddy into the pit and he's eaten by the trellologs. A rare child death on Nails in a Coffin, but I still have a job to do and I'm going to give Freddy one and a half Nails in a Coffin. Now he followed a kid that he punched into the face into this forest, to this secluded area. Okay, that should cause a little concern. And there's a bag at the edge of this big pit and Freddy just stood there at the edge. You know, it just made it way too easy for him to be pushed in. He was a little suspicious of Jamie's intentions. That's really why he said, hey, this better be no trick. So if you're somewhat suspicious of his intentions, why are you going to stand on the edge of this giant pit where it'd be so easy for somebody to push you in when you had punched them in the face unprovoked? But I did give Freddie that extra half an hour since he was a kid and probably he did have some naivety uh, in him. But yeah, it was a pretty stupid decision. So that's why I'm only going to give Freddie one and a half nails in a coffin. Our next step doesn't have for a while, so in the meantime, we get to see what a freaking wacko <laughs> Jamie is. While Jamie and his living babysitter Sandy are talking in the kitchen, she drops a knife onto the floor, lands right in front of her feet, and she picks it up right as he was saying, I'll get it. Then he gives her this really creepy look that should have been a huge red flag for everybody. And he runs upstairs saying he's going to go talk to Teddy. And it, it, you can easily see how Jamie's going to have an obsession with Sandy, and it's probably not going to work out well for everybody. Jamie's level of creepiness only gets worse as the movie plays on. He watches Sally sleep. He's watching her in the shower, leaving notes on the mirror. He messes with a neighbor he doesn't like. He's made all these enemies around town, and the way he's treated by everybody, you come to find out, is kind of warranted. Abigail is a young girl Jamie's age, and she attends school with them and lives in a neighborhood close by. She's mean to Jamie, even calling him a funny person. So Jamie wants his revenge. He goes to talk to her, ask if he could borrow a bike, since he kind of likes her. But she's not having any of it. She thinks Jamie's a real weirdo. So Jamie tells her he knows of a secret bike path that no girl could handle. Abigail says, want to bet? And Jamie's like, sure, and bets her a silver supervisor whistle. Jamie runs into the woods where the pit is, and Abigail is following on her bike. He's ahead of her and he's teasing her to come on, come on. He gets a little ahead of her hiding behind a tree where he sets up a tripwire. Abigail falls for the trap, hitting a tripwire and falling off of her bike. After she falls off her bike, Jamie picks it up and rides off towards the pit. Abigail is slow to get up, but she does and she runs after Jamie. He stops the bike on the far side of the pit and he sits there waiting for her. She's marching towards Jamie, threatening to call the police, but she walks right into the pit and she's killed by the travel logs. Sorry, Abigail, but you're only going to get one nail in a coffin. How did this girl not see the giant hole in the ground right in front of her? It wasn't nighttime like with Freddy. It was broad daylight. And as I've said before, I don't think people in movie have any type of peripheral vision. I get that she was angry at Jamie and she was storming after him. But I don't understand how she walked right into this pit, never stopping or slowing down. Even if you're looking directly in front of you, 
your vintage is still going to see the ground. How she didn't see the hole, I don't understand. This is a one nail in the coffin kill all day long. Jamie's next kill is Miss Oliphant, an elderly blind woman in a wheelchair. She was mean to Jamie, and that's not going to bode too well for her. He pushes her in the wheelchair towards the forest with the pit, and she's screaming the entire time. There's really nothing she can do as Jamie pushes her through the forest, right up to the pit, and without stopping, tilts the chair to the edge and just dumps her in, and she's also eaten by the trello logs. I'm going to give Miss Oliphant two nails in the coffin. There really wasn't much she could do. I mean, she was blind and in a wheelchair. She was screaming the entire time while Jamie was pushing her, so she knew she was in danger. And this was also in broad daylight. So my real question is, where the hell was everybody else in town that no one even noticed this? A blind woman in a wheelchair screaming with this little weirdo pushing her. And it was from, you know, around her house to the forest. So it wasn't like it was right across the street. By the way, I didn't think anything, I didn't see anything that Miss Alphen ever did that was foolish. She just told on Jamie to his parents when he was being a dick. So... Nothing wrong there because he is. So in nails in a coffin when somebody was given little to no chance of survival and there really wasn't nothing they can do, I go down the middle and give them two nails in the coffin. Sandy's boyfriend Alan is Jamie's next target. Now he's a threat since Jamie has a crush on Sandy. Both of them playing catch, tossing a football around. Jamie has the ball. He runs into the woods with Alan following after him since there's a clearing up ahead. So Alan follows along. Jamie tells Alan to go long, and he passes the ball to the adult, and when he goes to catch it, he falls into the pit and is killed by the trolley logs. Alan, you're a dumbass, and you're getting one now in the coffin. He was a sports guy, so you would think he would have seen the giant pit in the ground while they were playing catch. It was like everybody else was just, they had this blind spot with this pit, like it's magically hidden, just like with Abigail. I don't know how he didn't see this big-ass hole in the ground at any time, especially since he's a sports guy, you'd think he'd be around of his footing or whatnot. Not aware of any of his surroundings. And so when you have zero spatial awareness, you're most likely going to get only one nail in the coffin. Jimmy has a talk with Teddy saying there are no more people left to feed to the trello logs. Teddy says there are two more people that they can use. Teddy talks to Jamie and he's actually the one telling Jamie to do all these evil things. Kill for me, Uncle Pete. Do it. Um, this takes it back to the start of the movie when Freddy was killed. You know, the two people Teddy was talking to are Freddy, who we already saw die, and Christina. After Christina saw Freddy get pushed into the pit, she wastes no time and takes off running for help. Jamie's right behind her, pursuing her in the woods. It's dark, and she's looking around for the right way to go. Jamie comes up from behind her and scares her, yelling at her for laughing at him when Freddy punched him in the face earlier in the movie. She runs off again, and she wants up back at the pit. Jamie's right there, and when he catches up to her, she's so frightened that she actually faints. Jamie kneels next to her, cradles in her arms for a moment, and then he picks her up over to the edge of the pit and just drops her in. Another kid death, but Christina earned herself two nails in the coffin. She was a square kid. She just saw her friend killed, and now there's crazy boys after her. I can see why she fainted, and she did run right away when she saw Jamie do what she did to Freddy. It was dark outside. She was scared, so I'm not going to blame her for getting lost or stopping allowing Jamie to catch up. She was just a child. She didn't make any foolish decisions here, like, not seeing the giant pit. She just passed out because she was so scared. So I think this is a good example of a two now in a coffin death. Back at home, Sandy's talking to Jamie, asking him if he knows anything about Alan, who's missing right now. Jamie's being really aloof, and Sandy looks like she knows Jamie is up to something, but she really can't quite place her finger on it. So she tells Jamie, you know, hey, Alan hasn't showed a football practice, and he hasn't called. This little turd goes, is that supposed to be my fault? So this pisses Sandy off and she smacks a little shit across the face. Realizing what she did, Sandy immediately apologizes. So Jamie tells her that Abigail, Christina, and Miss Oliphant are all missing and they don't eat candy bars. Sandy says to Jamie, please believe me, I'm sorry for slapping you. So Jamie tells her, hey, you didn't believe me. So she's feeling guilty for slapping Jamie and for not believing him when he first told her about the trolley logs. So she decides to let Jamie show her where the trolley logs actually are. Sandy follows Jamie to the pit, and as soon as they get there, he shows her the trello logs. When she sees them, she's mesmerized by the sight of these creatures. She tells Jamie these creatures have to be tens of thousands of years old. She tells him they're a paleontologist that could study these creatures. Jamie wants none of this. It's his secret that he wants to keep. So while both of them are arguing over this, Sandy is too close to the edge of the pit, and she falls in. Her dress gets caught on some roots, and she's screaming for Jamie to help her, reaching up both reaching with their hands. She's hanging over the trial logs or reaching up for her. They eventually get a hold of her and pull her to the pit and she is eaten and Jamie can only look on in horror. 
When I first watched this film, I would have thought Sandy would have survived, only to be killed with 20 minutes left into the film. Alas, we still have to nail her. Um, <laughs> I'm going to water her one now in the coffin. This is for a few reasons. She never should have followed that little bastard into the forest. He's a creep. He was watching her sleep, watching her in the shower, making inappropriate comments about her boyfriend. She was right to slap him earlier, and she never should have followed him. She should have called his parents and quit a whole lot earlier, especially after he was watching her sleep and leaving messages on the bathroom mirror. It was also wrong of her part to wear a nightgown the way she did around the teenage boy. That's kind of weird. It just felt ignorant and dense. So all you did was maybe egg this kid on in a way. And when she was by the pit, she forgot she also had spatial awareness. How is she that close to the edge of a pit that you could slip in? Be aware of your damn surroundings, people. Come on. And she saw what was down there. So the young, woman, the young woman's life was unfortunately cut short due to her multiple mistakes and foolish decisions, which is why I have no choice but to award her only one nail in the coffin. A few days later, Jamie goes back to the pit. He sits on the edge and he tells the trello logs that there are no more peep of him to offer them. Now, he reflects that most other people are kind and all those he's viewed as enemies are now gone. So, failing bad, he tosses them a rope and he remarks that they are going to have to fend for themselves now. Suddenly, he does see a ghostly image of Sandy, which is his guilt. So, this terrifies him and prompting him to run away. To the surprise of no one, the trello logs use the rope to climb out of the pit and this will not work out well for a lot of people. The trello logs are hungry and they start searching for food. Young couple Greg and Karen are enjoying a swim in a lake, underwear they're being watched by these creatures. Greg gets out of the water and Karen stays in for a little bit. So he's sitting on the beach drying off. And while Karen continues to swim, she asks him if he wants to go skinny dipping. But he says he's tired. You blew it! Karen swims to the shore, underwear that she's being watched by these trial logs from the bushes. So she gets out of the water. She takes up her, her top and she places on one of the branches. I guess she wants to go skinny dipping still. But she's grabbed from behind by one of the trial logs and she is killed off screen. Even though Karen was killed off screen, I did see enough to give her a ranking. And I'm going to give her two nails in the coffin. She really didn't make any foolish decisions here. She was swimming in the lake and she got out of water, took her top off and was grabbed from behind. There is no reason for her to believe that she was in any danger. I think this is a clear-cut case of being in the wrong place at the wrong time. No stupid decisions were made. So in those instances, we go down the middle and give the victim two nails in the coffin. Greg hears Karen scream when she was grabbed. So he gets up, goes looking for her. He's searching around. He sees one of the trial logs carrying her away. He calls out to Karen, but he runs over looking for her. He's grabbed, taken away, killed, and eaten as well. Greg earned himself one and a half nails in a coffin. Now I'm going to dock him points. For not staying with his girlfriend that wanted to go skinny dipping. If he had stayed with her, there's a chance they may have been able to avoid being killed by these trial logs. At least a chance to try and fight them off. And I just think it wasn't wise to leave his half-naked girlfriend alone when she was about to get naked. It was a bad decision. He, like I said, he blew it. He should have stayed with her the entire time. That would have given both of them a better chance of survival. Gotta take some points away, which is why I'm only giving Greg one and a half. Nails in the coffin. Word is out that there are now creatures killing innocent people. So pretty quickly a posse forms up looking for these things. The town sheriff tells everybody, if you're in danger, kill the creature. Don't wait, just kill it. How that didn't end in disaster, I am really surprised. The trial logs flee from their pursuing posse and manage to reach their original pit. But their respite is short-lived as the posse swiftly corners them at the pit's entrance. With the sheriff's command, gunfire erupts, swiftly killing all of the trollologs. Later, the city does fill in the pit with mounds of dirt to ensure no other creatures could make their way out of it. Jamie is sent to go live with his grandparents in the countryside, where his grandfather introduces them to Alicia, a girl his age. With a little bit of nervousness, Jamie approaches Alicia to go make some friends. He has Teddy in a bag. He places the bag down and tells Teddy, hey, he'll be right back. Jamie and Alicia meet, and they introduce themselves to each other. They're like step-cousins, Alicia says. Hey, we can play together, which makes Jamie happy. And she tells him to chase her, and she runs off with Jamie, well, <laughs> chasing her. She leads him to a forest where she shows him what she found. Guess what? A giant pit. Jamie approaches it slowly since he's seen this before. He tells her, they're trilologues. They eat people. Well, Alicia knows this, and she calmly walks behind Jamie and shoves him into the pit. Jamie gets the final set of nails in a coffin for this episode, and I'm going to give him one nail in a coffin. He knew right away what he was looking at when Alicia showed him her pit. 
He even said, they eat people. So why was he standing so close to the edge of the pit is a mystery to me. It just seemed really foolish. He should have known better. Plus, it was his fault he had to go live with his grandparents. So I'm going to take that into consideration as well. And I don't know. I just, I don't think I ever want to give this little shit more than one now in the coffin. You know, everything was his fault and Teddy's, I guess. Basically, he should have known better not to stand so close to the edge of a pit with, you know, man-eating monsters in it. There we go, ladies and gentlemen, those are all my nails in a coffin for the pit. Here's a summary of all the nails I've awarded. Here's the average nails in a coffin, which is 1.44 nails, which does seem appropriate for this movie. It had a good mix of stupidity and people just being in the wrong place at the wrong time. I do like this movie a lot. It's a wacky, weird movie with the kid that you kind of want to punch in the face as soon as you get to know him. And the last 20 minutes had some surprises in it, and I like that I didn't see some of that stuff coming the way the movie ended. It's a good movie, definitely worth the watch, and you should check it out. So, thanks for watching. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe. All that fun stuff. I'll see you guys soon for another episode of Nails in a Coffin. So, until then, take care, stay safe, be good to each other. I am your friendly neighborhood uncle Pete. Remember, with great kills, there must also come great nails.